more and more I have taken the deliberate steps to begin conversations with the words, I may have mentioned this to you before. It could well be an age thing, but I really prefer the idea that the impact of lockdown has caused subjects of conversations, even between families, to be somewhat restricted. So I grab at a subject to talk about rather than let a long silence develop. On occasions, I end up repeating myself. As an example, I begin to tell whoever I'm with what I've been doing. Say I've gone for a walk around the fields at the top of my road. And it was becoming evident I was repeating myself when cryptic comments were made by my family, such as, that's four times you have been for a walk around the fields. I use this example to explain that in some ways the lectionary these past two weeks sounds like a repetition of stories. It's not me repeating myself, but quite simply, although we are in now in Easter 3, we are still with the resurrection stories. The reading from Luke this week does bear a resemblance to the reading from John last week, the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples and then later to another one of the disciples, Thomas. Overall, listeners might have the impression that the worship leader is indeed repeating themselves, but I'm not. The similarity between the stories could be explained by the suggestion that the stories from John and Luke had their genesis in earlier accounts and one had used the other's text. The reading from Luke opens with the two travellers, followers of Jesus, giving their account of their meeting with him as they walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Luke is the only gospel writer who tells this story. But this year, year B in the lectionary, it is not included in the readings. However, it is worth touching on especially since the reading from Luke opens with this account. That story the two followers tell of how they did not recognise Jesus walking with them. They were so completely wrapped up with one another, talking of the recent events of Jesus' trial, crucifixion, and of the women finding Jesus' tomb empty, and the angels in the tomb telling them that Jesus was alive. They were so wrapped up in their disappointment and their hopes of Jesus being the Messiah coming to rescue Israel, the travellers hadn't recognised him, hadn't recognised him joining them as they spoke. And the followers clearly hadn't recognised the significance of the events around Jesus' death. Jesus was simply a stranger walking alongside them and not even when he tried to explain to them his resurrection through using the scriptures. It was only as they shared supper together as Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, they recognised Jesus and then Jesus disappeared. And that is a profound statement on its own one that we should hold on to in conjunction with the sacrament of communion, the sharing of bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, but that we must think of that at another time. The opening words of the reading from Luke are of travellers relating this story to the disciples. When Jesus appeared among them, Again, the disciples were filled with fear, confusion and doubt. And who could blame them after all the trauma of the previous week's events? The disciples, it would seem, could not imagine any other outcome of the events but death. And this is hard to understand as the disciples had been at the centre of events. They had been with Jesus and walked with him. 
They struggled to believe who Jesus was as they travelled together and met with the crowds. How often did Jesus despair at their lack of understanding, at their lack of faith? But now this, this was something new, something different. Here in a room, the disciples were wrestling with their emotions, their disbelief and their understanding of life and death and resurrection. Luke's account was of Jesus asking the disciples to believe in him, his resurrection, that they were united with the living presence of the risen Lord. Jesus wasn't a figment of their imaginations. As we heard, he showed them his wounds. They touched him and Jesus ate some fish. And in this very ordinary action, allowed the extraordinariness of God to come through. Jesus was alive and eating fish. Yet his body was not a fully restored human body, as with the rising of Lazarus since Jesus was able to appear and disappear. This was something different. This was the resurrected Christ. Jesus again used the scripture to explain the events of his suffering, his death and the resurrection on the third day. This was the fulfilment of the scripture. All that had been written about Jesus in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, revealed the purposes of God for all creation and all people that came and come together through the stories of Jesus, fulfilled in the risen Lord. Luke's account was Jesus asking the disciples to believe in him, his resurrection, and that they were united in the living presence of the risen Lord. In comparing the two stories from Luke, the story of the two followers on the road to Emmaus and the other, the meeting with the disciples, there is a slight difference in that there is an addition to the second story. We hear that Jesus tells the disciples directly that they are to be witnesses, that the message be taken out to all nations in his name to all nations according to scripture. And it was, as we can recall in the reading from the book of Acts, also written by Luke. The two books indeed work in tandem. In Acts, Peter's address to the people outside the temple follows the healing of a lame man. Everyone around him was amazed. And Peter asked, why should they be? Because in faith and in the name of Jesus, the man was healed. Peter and John were witnesses to the living God, to the ministry of Jesus' healing. Peter and John had taken Jesus' mission out. Here was faith in the absence of Jesus' physical presence. The disciples were fulfilling the call from Christ to be witnesses. It is in faith that we can be witnesses to Christ. It is here that we can come into the story. The disciples had a lot to deal with, mixed emotions of disbelief and joy and they struggled to work it all out. Perhaps they didn't fully understand, yet Jesus entrusted them to the task of being witnesses. And we too are called and challenged just as the disciples to be witness to Jesus Christ. Yet we too can experience the same emotions, doubt, anxiety, confusion, fear, and yes, of blindness, blindness to the Lord walking alongside us and we don't recognise him. Yet through meeting with people, we can encounter Christ 
in the actions and words of those around us, of those we know, and perhaps people we don't know and meet only once. And we can encounter Christ as we are invited to the table with Christ, with Christ among us, sharing bread, the body of Christ and wine, the blood of Christ. For those who come to unite and share, this is the very foundation of our Christian faith. This is the living presence of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.